Right Understanding to Help Others Part 6 Read on. Page number 13. Heading. The new goal is today's. The reactions are from the past. Questioner. So should one live only for the sake of helping others? Dada Shri, yes. One should live only for the sake of helping others. However, even if you were to now switch tracks immediately, the reactions from the past will come. So you may become fed up that I'm still having to endure this unhappiness. Nonetheless, you'll have to endure it for some time. Then subsequently, you will not have any misery. But at the moment, you are starting out afresh. So the reactions of the past are bound to come. Whatever wrong deeds were done until now, the effects of that are bound to come, aren't they? The reactions of the past will come. For instance, we are sowing wheat today, and we may have sown millet in the past. So after sowing wheat, we wait. Now the wheat should grow. No, the millet will keep growing. Hey, the seeds sown in the past are giving the result. So maybe until now, if we have not lived life helping others, doing seva, or with morality and honesty, then some reactions of the past will come. However, at the time of those reactions, we should understand that we didn't hold on to the right goal, and this is the result of that. The result of the new goal will come later. Our faith should not change. Unsteady and unstable results should not arise within. We are not getting any benefit by doing this, so let's keep doing the wrong things. In reality, by doing this adulteration, corruption, dishonesty, immorality, in the beginning, we may feel that we earned a lot, but actually, we are indeed using it from our bank balance in the form of merit karma. When we will truly need it in our old age, we are enjoying this life as a result of our past life, and whatever rotten seeds we are sowing in this life, we will get the result in our next life. Everything will grow in a rotten form. At that time, our situation will be very difficult. We will not even get a job anywhere. In the previous pages, there is a very nice point. We have done the religion in our past life, and that is why we are getting money as a byproduct. The main production is to practice religion and spirituality, help others, and do seva. As a result, we'll keep getting money as a byproduct. Therefore, Dada reveals a great accomplished principle here. Read on. Heading Ultimately, one is to oblige his own self. If you have obliged others, if you have benefited others, page number 14, if you have lived for others, you will always benefit to that extent. But it is a material benefit. The return received will be materialistic. Questioner. Instead of obliging others, what if one obliges oneself? Dada Shri. That's it. Everything should indeed be done to oblige one's self. If one obliges his own self, then he would be eternally blessed. But for that, one has to know one's own self, soul. Dada says, one has to know oneself. Oneself does not mean I am Chandubai. That's not what it means. That is not referred to as oneself. That is all worldly. This is for the real self. If you are doing it for the self, then the other person is also the self. So do it for him as well. If you do it for the self within the other person, then ultimately it will liberate you. Until then, one should help others. But the return received for that will be materialistic. In order to know one's own self, one would have to realize who am I. In reality, you are a pure soul. Until now, you only knew that I am Chandubhai. Didn't you? Or did you know something else? This Chandubhai is indeed who I am. That is what you'll say. I am her husband. I am his maternal uncle. I am his paternal uncle. And the cycle goes on. Isn't it like that? This is the only knowledge that you have, isn't it? You have not gone beyond that, have you? Yes, we need to recognize the self. In reality, who am I? Once we truly come to know who am I, 
then we will be able to oblige our own self. To oblige our own self means a state free of kashai. It's a life without attachment, abhorrence, and anger, pride, deceit, and greed. Beyond that, Dada has also talked about the five major vows, non-stealing, non-violence, non-acquisitiveness, truth, and celibacy. One should have these attributes as well. Then that will be considered as obliging one's own self, and it'll be equivalent to doing seva of one's own self. Ultimately, that will become the cause for attaining moksha. Heading, serving people is a societal moral duty. The matter on helping others is finished. Now the matter on seva begins. Questioner, however in worldly interactions, it is such that we feel pity, we serve people, we have empathy towards others that I want to do something, find a job for someone, get a sick person admitted to the hospital, so aren't all of those activities a form of worldly moral duty via Bhardharma? Dada Shri, those are all considered a person's general obligations. Questioner, so then serving people is a worldly duty. That is how it should be understood, isn't it? It is considered as a worldly moral duty, is it not? Dada Shri, it is not even considered a worldly moral duty. It is actually called a social moral duty, Samaj Dharma. Page number 15. The service, Seva, that is convenient in a particular society is convenient to its people. But if that same service were to be provided to another society, then it turns out to be inconvenient. So it can be called a worldly moral duty when it turns out to be the same for everyone. Up until now, whatever you have done is considered community service, Samaj Seva. Each person's community service is of a different kind. Each society is also of a different kind. And the service in each society is also of a different kind. Yes, Dada explains more at the subtle level. If we help a society, say if someone is in difficulty, find a job for someone, get a sick person admitted to the hospital, that... Worldly moral duty is completely different. Whereas this is referred to as community service. It cannot be called public service, it can be called community service. Regardless, it helps him. And beyond that, we can make the other person get rid of his mental miseries. Our spiritual science is spectacular. No matter the caste or religion of the person, it is suitable for each and every person. One becomes free from his mental miseries. All kinds of miseries that arose out of the wrong beliefs start coming to an end. Read on. Heading Public service begins from home. Questioner. The people who do public service, why must they have entered into it? Dada Shri. It is because of good intentions. The desire that how can I do good to people? It is because of good sentiments, isn't it? It is their intention and sentiment towards others that may people become free of the misery that they have. That is the intention behind it. It is a very noble intention, but what I have noticed about those in public service is that if one were to go to their homes and ask, they have a lot of claims left on them afterwards. So that cannot be considered as service. What does a claim mean? It means that people at home are being burnt by him, so they only speak negative of him. Let's talk about something else. He helps the entire village but puts us in difficulty. Don't they say, he feeds the entire village, but the people at his home remain hungry. So what should true seva be like? It should begin from home. Everyone at home should be satisfied. Nobody should feel unhappy. Everyone at home should be happy. Go ahead, help others. It should be like that. Service should begin from home. Then come the neighbors, and thereafter comes the other service. Instead, when we go to their homes and ask, there are a lot of claims. What do you think? For this reason, the initiative should be taken from home, shouldn't it? Questioner, this man says that in his case, there are no claims at home. Dada Shri, that means that his service is genuine. Yes, and if someone gives us this kind of an answer, this man says that in his case there are no claims at home. 
then we would think, he may say so, but if we go and check at his house, then they will complain about him. So our intellect takes it in the wrong sense. Dada takes it so positively. Oh, is it? Then his seva is considered as genuine seva. Whereas we don't refrain from using our intellect, do we? But this is so nice. He becomes helpful to everyone at home and his neighbors. He becomes helpful to everyone. Read on. Page number 16. Heading, Perform Public Service While Keeping a Pure Intention Questioner, While doing public service, if I have done darshan, devotional viewing of God within those people, then that will give good results, won't it? Dada Shri, If one has done the darshan of God, then one would not get involved in public service. Because... After having the darshan of God, who would leave God? In fact, the reason to serve the public is to discover God. Yes, as long as one has not found God, do seva of the public. This will indeed be considered as worshipping God in an indirect way. It will be considered as doing God's seva. And if we find the living God, then that worldly thing will leave. Service to the public should be done from the heart. If it is from the heart, then it will reach everywhere. If public service and publicity, prakhyati, come together, then it puts a person in difficulty. If service to the public is done without fame, then it is genuine. Fame will indeed come through word of mouth. However, it should be such that one does not have any desire for fame. Yes. Now, Khyati and Prakhyati are both different. Khyati means word of mouth publicity, which keeps happening on its own. People attain peace of mind, so they tell others, you have this problem, go to this person, all your miseries will be eliminated, his talks are very nice. That is referred to as Khyati. Whereas Prakhyati means Advertising is done and then people come to know about it. That is referred to as prakyati. That is a completely wrong way. Khyati should be without any desire. One should not have the desire that I should get fame and people should come to know about me. Otherwise, that poison will fall in. Instead, it should be done heartily. If one has the desire for fame, then the ego and intellect will arise. Whereas if it is done heartily, then it helps people a lot. One has the intention in his heart, this person's misery should come to an end. Moreover, when one has done the intention in his past life, it manifests as an effect in this life. He becomes instrumental, and when he says a few words, the other person experiences peace. Now, if he indulges in the pleasure that arises from doership, see, my fame increased. That woman was saying this in the morning. I did so good for the family, and nobody is giving me any appreciation. They are appreciating other people. I helped them so much, they should at least praise me a little bit. That intention is referred to as an expectation of fame. It should be without any desire, it should be without any expectation. That benefits others as well as us. If we have the desire for fame, then it will harm us. The other person will get the benefit, but it will harm us. People are not such that they will do any service to the public. It is actually the greed for fame, the greed for respect, all kinds of greed deep within that drive them to do it. If one clears pride, fame, greed, mo, and the expectations within, then he will be able to do a lot of seva. After attaining nyan, this part begins. One's mind, speech, and body are used for helping people, and he can make the real spiritual effort of jagrati for kashai-free interactions. What should the people who serve the public actually be like? They are people who are a parigrahi, free from acquisitiveness. But here, everyone is out to make a name for themselves, thinking that gradually someday I will become a minister. With this motive, they serve the public. The intention within is unscrupulous. So when all these external problems, greed, unnecessary acquisitiveness, and all of that is put to an end, then everything will fall in place. Yes, a person who is free from acquisitiveness, he doesn't want anything at all. A person like Sai Baba, 
He was like an ascetic who lived solely on alms. People used to become free from their miseries by his mere presence, his talks, and his blessings. When one has the intention, I don't want anything at all, a lot of spiritual powers arise in a human being. The extent of these spiritual powers is such that, just by uttering a few words or just by talking, the miseries of the other person are eliminated. So ultimately, this is referred to as purity, one who is free from kashai. He doesn't want any worldly interactions or doesn't want anything at all. Whereas this intense greed is referred to as unscrupulous intentions. Someday I will become a big leader. Why does he want to become a leader? Because I can take as much commission as I want. I can take whatever benefits I want. But one has to take care of the political party. There are so many difficulties. If one can get rid of all this, if he becomes pure, then he can become helpful to so many people. If one wants to become helpful, one does not need to work on becoming helpful to others. Instead, focus on maintaining purity. One should maintain purity and do as much as possible. Then nature makes him a very big instrument. He becomes helpful to many people. As much as one becomes pure, he should be able to get rid of the expectation of fame, pride, greed, and acquisitiveness from within. He should get rid of unscrupulous intentions. Let's take a few questions now. Veena, what do you want to ask? Pujya Shri, Jai Sachidanand. Jai Sachidanand. I wanted to ask that before taking Nan, you used to do seva of everyone. What did you used to do? Kindly give the details. Don't talk about the time before attaining Nan at all. I didn't know anything at all. I was 17 years old when I came here. So before that, I didn't know anything and I didn't used to do much. I used to play, study, eat and then sleep. I used to do a little bit. I used to help my mother. I used to put clarified butter on the flatbread. I used to go to the flour mill and bring the flour. I used to do a little bit of housework. Nothing big. So you didn't have any thoughts in your mind for doing seva or work for someone? No, I didn't know anything at all. I didn't know anything. Secondly, the prakriti, the non-self complex. Of file 1, the seva of everyone. Before attaining Nan, I used to do seva, but at that time the ego was there and people gave me a lot of respect. I used to like it as well. Moreover, at that time I didn't know that this is referred to as pride. Now, after attaining Dada's Gnan, I came to know about it. I have accepted a lot of respect. I have done a lot of egoistic behavior. Now, I am trying to decrease it gradually. But I still tend to eat the sweet dish of respect. When someone says, Veena, you did this very well, at that time I feel a lot of happiness within. Later I come to know about it. Now, what happens is, I have become so involved in Seva that I am not able to progress further in Gnan. What can I do about it? You don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> for which purpose have you become involved in Seva? Is it for the purpose that may more people attain Dada's Nyan or for the purpose that you will get more sweet dishes of respect? No, now I know about it, yet I end up eating the respect. But mostly, my intention is indeed that may everyone get Dada's Gnan and may everyone come out of their inner sufferings. I keep thinking about that all the time. That is equivalent to sowing seeds of wheat, the millet. When you eat the sweet dish of respect, that is a result of past karma. Gradually, you should remain aware that due to Dada's grace, Dada used to say, all of the celestial beings that protect the reign of the absolutely enlightened Lord are going to help a lot in the work of Jagat Kalyan. If one is pure, they will make that person an instrument. Otherwise, how many places can we reach? To do salvation of the entire world in the subtle form, Dada's intention, Nirama's intention, the help of the celestial beings and the mission of Lord Simandar Swami, did people attain this path of salvation because you told them? No, it is indeed due to His grace. You feel, I told Him, that is why He was able to attain this path of salvation, right? I feel in my mind, I just became instrumental. You feel, I told Him a few words and that's why He was able to attain this path of salvation, right? Or will He attain salvation through Dada's grace? Through Dada's grace. Yes, otherwise, the intellect, if we call and tell the other person, there's satsang in the evening, please come. If he comes, then we feel he attained this path of salvation because of me. The ego catches it. No, no. We called this person, but who called the other 20 people? You didn't call them. 
who helped them attain the path of salvation. That is due to Dada's grace. So if someone else is doing that, then for this person who we brought to satsang, someone else is doing that as well. We are not doing it. Yes, we can continue to give information. If someone attains this path and progresses further, that will happen due to his circumstances, Dada's grace, and the blessings of the celestial beings. I mean to say that if I am doing all these things, then I become insincere in progressing towards Gnan. No, you are doing the vidis, aren't you? Yes. You do Samaik and Pratikraman. That is correct. Gradually, you will be able to progress further. I am insincere in doing Samaik. No problem. But you are able to do Pratikraman, aren't you? Yes. I am able to do Pratikraman and I do so many prayers for everyone. You don't feel happy hurting others, do you? No, not at all. That's it. That means we are surely progressing in Nyan. We have the intention to follow Dada's five Agnas, right? Yes, since morning. I am able to follow only three. How can I follow all five? You don't decide like that, do you? Five Agnas fully. No, no. I definitely decide in the morning that I want to follow Dada's five Agnas. Yes, so we are definitely on the right track, okay? Continue doing Dada's work. There is nothing much to do to remain in Nyan. It is just that don't see anyone's faults and don't hurt anyone. If we end up hurting someone, then tell Falwan, wash it off and don't hurt anyone. Interact with everyone lovingly. That is more than enough. That is surely our progress. We don't have to progress. We have to make sure not to incur a loss. If we don't incur a loss, then progress is going to happen for sure. As the garbage keeps decreasing, we will be able to progress further. When the files are cleared, that is our greatest progress. When all our files are cleared, we will become free to attain moksha. The bickering with files is decreasing, right? Yes. So we are on the right path. Don't carry any burden, okay? Okay. Jai Sachidanand. Jitendra Bhai Shah. Jai Sachidanand Pujashri. Go ahead. On page number 40, Dadashri says, I indeed serve the entire world, and I also accept the service of the entire world. If you are able to understand this, then it is such that your work will be accomplished. I didn't understand the second part that says, I also accept the service of the entire world. Yes, he is certainly taking it all. What is this like? If we see Dada's work, we are helping Dada in his work of Jagat Kalyan. Isn't that considered as doing Dada Seva? Yes. Dada says, I am giving Nyan to everyone. I am doing things which help and give peace to everyone then that is considered as doing seva, right? So he is giving seva and he is taking seva as well. Today, everyone says, I want to do Dada's work, I want to do Dada's work. Whoever takes Nyan, everyone has only one intent. I want to give seva in Dada's work of Jagat Kalyan. So if one gives help in Dada's project of Jagat Kalyan, then is it not considered as helping Dada? Yes. Wouldn't Dada be pleased? This is definitely my project. And this is my intention since so many lifetimes that may people attain peace. So if we give peace to people, even if we don't hurt anyone, even that is considered as doing Dada Seva. Dada is pleased. At least he progressed halfway. He stopped hurting others. If we don't hurt anyone through our anger, pride, deceit and greed, then Dada will be very pleased. So that is considered as doing Dada Seva. Seva doesn't mean only massaging his legs. If we fulfill his desire, then that is considered a very big seva. Dada used to tell Nirama, you are doing the work of Jagat Kalyan. That is our greatest seva. Seva of our body and seva of our desire. That is indeed the ultimate seva. Did you understand? Yes. So he took seva and gave seva to the world. Day and night, he had only one intention. The entire night, he used to do vidis. He used to do them day and night. His entire life was totally for the work of Jagat Kalyan, until his last breath. How about that? His each and every word has come out only for the salvation of people. He doesn't want anything for himself at all. He hasn't wanted anything for so many lifetimes. He had only one intention, of world salvation. I don't want anything. How can the world attain salvation? He had only this grief. He used to contemplate on only this day and night. That is considered as giving seva to the world, right? Do you understand? Yes. Dada himself says, when someone meets me, I don't think about how he will be useful to me. I only have thoughts such as, what is his difficulty and how can I help him? How about that? Whereas if someone meets us, we think, oh, he is a dentist? He will be useful to me. <laughs> oh, he is a cardiologist? He will be useful to me. Don't we have such thoughts? No. 
You may not, but people have such thoughts, right? If he meets a wealthy person, he will think, if my business slows down, then I can get two and a half million from him. He is a good person. He was telling me, whenever you need it, I will lend you money. He is a nice person. That is referred to as a selfish motive. Yes, one notes down, how can this person be helpful to me? The worldly life is certainly like this. The intellect of the worldly life is like this. It keeps observing, who and how will he be useful to me? How will he be beneficial to me? For example, what does a shopkeeper observe? Has this customer come to sit in the air condition or has he come to purchase something? <laughs> if the customer is not going to buy any goods, the shopkeeper will ask a few questions and figure it out. So you will talk about this and that and get rid of him. Please leave. Therefore, he observes, what kind of help will this customer give me? Is he here to give me business? Dada says, we have never thought about what benefit will he give me. He never had such thoughts at all. So where are we standing and what is Dada's state? Do you understand? Yes. Jai Sachidanan. Jai Sachidanan.